This video is a follow-on from the previous video in the playlist. Here we're going to have a look at the entry widget and how it can be used with string var. It will also summarize some of the material we've already covered in this playlist on TK Inter. We looked at this computer program in the previous video in the playlist, so if you are unsure as to how this program works, I suggest you watch the previous video first. We have the usual three lines you would expect when writing a TK Inter program using Python. Here you can see we're producing four widgets, label underscore one, entry underscore one, button underscore one, and label underscore two. These four are then positioning these widgets onto the graphical user interface using the grid method. So for example, if we look here, we can see that label underscore one is going into row zero, column zero. And if we look to the graphical user interface, it will look like this. And we can see all of the four widgets appear. If we look at this widget for a moment, it is this one here which is being placed in row one column one it can't be seen because the background color of the label is the same as the background color of the form now attached to this button we have some code and we can tell that's the case because if we come here which created the instance of the button you can see here it says command is assigned say underscore hello which ties this button to this function here now when we therefore click on the button this is going to execute so let's therefore walk through the runtime for this program and into this here I'm going to type Fred Smith the next thing I'm going to do is to click onto this button and when I do that what you will see happen is hello Fred Smith appears here now why is that the case well when you typed in Fred Smith and you clicked on the button because of this line and in particular we set this option to equal say underscore hello this executed and this is a message here to this entry box so it gets Fred Smith and it assigns it to name of user. Now on this line, we concatenate this hello followed by the space with this, which is Fred Smith. So string to display now holds hello Fred Smith. We then use this variable string underscore two underscore display and we assign it to the text property of label two. And that's why hello Fred Smith appears here. This program shows amendments to the one we've just considered. Let's have a look at the first amendment, which is on this line. And here it's var underscore one is assigned string var. Now what this does, it creates an instance of a string that's going to be bound to var underscore one. If we come down here now to the label, label underscore two, we can see here I've put text variable is assigned var underscore one. Therefore, this program statement, in particular the setting of this option, has effectively joined together label underscore two to var underscore one. Let's therefore consider the runtime for this program, as you can see here. Now, because of this line of code, and you can see this option, what we can do, we can say that to the label which is here, and remember we can't see it because it has the same background color as the form, we have effectively tied var underscore one. And I'm going to show that schematically as shown here. So to the label that we can see here, I have got this joining line, which means that this variable, which you can see is named var underscore one, is connected with the label that is appearing here. So let's consider a typical runtime for this program. And I'm going to type into the entry box here, Fred Smith. I'm then going to click onto this button. Now when I click onto this button, because of this option here, this is the code that's going to execute. So the first line of code is going to be this within the function. And it's saying entry underscore one dot get. So it's going to get Fred Smith and it's going to put Fred Smith into here. Now this line is going to join the Fred Smith to the hello and it's going to assign it to string to display. Now, what this line is doing, it is going to set var underscore one to string to display, which we have just seen is hello Fred Smith. Consequently, if we look down here, and in particular at the variable we're concerned with, you can see hello Fred Smith appears here. Now it's the case that once it appears in this variable, because this variable is tied to this label, it will also appear in the label as you can see here as hello Fred Smith. So 
to get the display out to the graphical user interface I didn't put it directly into the label I put it into this variable and once you do that then it automatically was then passed to the label so let's compare this line of code to the code as it appeared on the previous slide and you can see it looked like this and if we consider this one the string to display was being assigned to the text attribute of label underscore two so it went directly to this position whereas here what we are doing we're setting var underscore one to the string to display so we don't go straight to here we put string to display which is hello Fred Smith into here Python and TK enter take care of ensuring that whatever is placed here is passed to here now why well because on this line if you have a look we've set this option here to text variable is assigned var underscore one so what Whatever we set var underscore one to will appear in label two. I have altered the code within the function and I'll explain what I've done as we run through the runtime for this program. When the program first executes, what we're going to see is this graphical user interface. And we should know, as we've already explained, that attached to the label here, we have got this variable. Now that variable is effectively attached to this label because of the setting of this option here. I will now enter into the entry box, Fred Smith. I'll now click on this here, click me to enter name. When I do that, because I've set this option here to command equals say underscore hello, it'll mean that this function will execute. If we look at this line, what we can see, we're going to read from entry underscore one using the get method, whatever I've just typed in, which you can see is Fred Smith. So Fred Smith is now going to be given to this variable. And on this line, I am going to set var underscore one to hello followed by the space concatenated with this here, which is Fred Smith. So we're going to see appearing in here, hello Fred Smith. Now of course, because I've already said that this var and this label are effectively connected together, we will have hello Fred Smith appearing here, as you can see. This line is responsible for setting var underscore one to the concatenation of these two. If we look at the previous program, what we saw was this. We had two lines to perform effectively the same thing. You see here we did the concatenation and that concatenation result was assigned to this variable and this variable appeared here inside the set method. Consequently, we set this variable here to hello Fred Smith and of course it then appeared automatically here as hello Fred Smith. Whereas on this line, what you can see, the concatenation appears here. This will form hello Fred Smith, and of course it appears as a parameter to this method. And what this method will do is set this variable to hello Fred Smith, and of course it will then appear here. Now at this point I'm not recommending an approach which is the better to do this or to have two lines performing the same task. I'll come back to look at possible ways of choosing which is the best approach when we get more into the Python playlist. I just want to point out here various ways of doing things when you're sending things to a graphical user interface. Now this program shows amendments to the one we've just considered and the first one I wish to point out is this here. I've got var underscore two is being assigned string var so we have created on this line the instance of a string that's bound to var underscore two if we now go and have a look at this line you can see for the text entry widget i have included this text variable is assigned var underscore two now what this has done it's joined this widget to this variable when this program executes, what we're going to see is this graphical user interface. And you should know there are four widgets within the window. Now, there is a difference that's not obvious when you look at the graphical user interface. The differences will be shown up by the fact if we have a look at this here, you can see that when we created the entry widget, we put here text var is assigned var underscore two. So to this entry widget, we've effectively got connected a variable var underscore two. Now, of course, we will still have connected to the label the other variable, which I haven't altered from the previous program. Now, I'm going to slow things right down here. And if you keep your eye on this entry widget, you'll see that I'm going to be typing in Fred Smith. But I've altered the speed of the video so you can see it appearing very, very slowly. 
and there's Fred Smith. But the reason I've done that, if you look here, you can see Fred Smith also appears in var underscore two. And I did nothing else. I was just typing in here. And as I was typing in here, it was appearing in this variable. Why? Because they are joined together because of this option on this line of the program. Now consider this line of code, and I want to concentrate on this here. You can see that this is a message, and it's a message that's going to invoke this get, but have a look at what this get is working on. It's working on var underscore two, because we're going to be getting whatever is entered into this variable here, not what was entered in here. We're going to get it from this position. We can see we've got Fred Smith appearing here, so we get that Fred Smith, and that Fred Smith is assigned to here and consequently on this line we concatenate hello with the space to Fred Smith thus this here is going to set var underscore one to the concatenation of these two which is hello Fred Smith and we can see that that appears in this variable here hello Fred Smith and because these are effectively connected together of course we'll see Fred Smith appearing here let's consider this line of the function and compare it to what went before in the previous slide and we saw in the previous slide that we had this program statement here and if you look at both of them they look pretty similar you see they they both have name underscore of underscore user they are both using the assign and they're both invoking a get method however we have to be careful that we realize that this message is a message to this widget and this widget has a get method that can be invoked so this will get Fred Smith and assign it to name of user whereas if we look at this message this is going to invoke the get method but it's going to invoke the get method method of this variable here not the get method that was within the widget here so we can see there is a difference they both invoke a get but the gets belong to different objects this one will get Fred Smith from here this one will get Fred Smith from here this program shows another amendment and the amendment appears within this function and you can see here I have one line one program statement and if we consider what happens with the runtime here you can see the graphical user interface we would expect now because of this line and this option we can see that attached to the text entry widget we're going to have var underscore two connected this will actually ensure that to the label here we're going to have var underscore one connected consequently when the user enters into here Fred Smith we know from the what we've already looked at Fred Smith will automatically appear here now when this is clicked you can see we just have the one line this is a message and it's a message to this variable and it's going to invoke the get method for this variable so this variable in fact is an instance it's an instance that has associated with it a get method so Fred Smith will be returned to here and Fred Smith will be concatenated with this hello and the space consequently here it'll say hello Fred Smith and then we're going to set variable underscore one to hello Fred Smith and if we look down here you can see that's precisely what happens hello Fred Smith appears here and because because this variable is joined to this label then hello Fred Smith will obviously appear here so let's compare this one line with what appeared on the previous slide as you can see here and we simply had two lines doing the same thing as this this here went to get from here Fred Smith it stored it in this variable and within the brackets here we concatenated the hello and the space to Fred Smith so then we set var1 to hello Fred Smith we simply got rid of this line we have put this in here in this video and the previous one in the playlist we considered this graphical user interface and we used it to allow the user to enter a string which was their name and then we clicked on the button and then it said hello whatever their name was in the previous video we saw the function that was attached to the button to be as follows this got the information from the entry box this formed the string this created the label this set the text property of that label to whatever was concatenated together and then the label was positioned 
on the graphical user interface. We then went on and altered this program as you can see here and this implied that we built the graphical user interface first and all four widgets were in place. We then got what they typed in at the entry box, we formed the string and then the string was assigned to the text property, the text attribute of label 2 which was already drawn on the graphical user interface. This program here did more or less the same as the one we've just considered. The difference is here. This is where we arrange for a variable called var underscore one to be connected to the label that was doing the displaying, i.e. the one that was in this position. And we got the information from the user, we created the string, we then set the variable to that string. And of course, when you set the variable, it automatically will appear in the graphical user interface. We went on and had a look at this one. Now, on this occasion what we did we concatenated in this position within the brackets of the set method in other words we remove this line here we put this slot inside here we then went on and had a look at this one and the difference here if you consider is shown on this line and this is where we went to get the information from var underscore two where var underscore two was joined to this entry widget here so whenever the user typed anything here it automatically went to this variable and then we got the data the user entered from that variable not from the text entry widget and of course this then set the label the display label as you would expect hello whatever the user's name was and then we went on to show this one where we simply showed it all appearing on one line of code where this line was got rid of and this was placed directly here inside this set now I'm not recommending any of these approaches I'm just showing you the different ways of doing what is effectively the same thing for an example like this it's not really time to be talking about what's the best Pythonic way of doing it what I want to show you are different ways of doing the same thing because when you read other people's code you'll see them doing this type of thing different ways of approaching the same problem it's just important when you're learning you realize there are all these different ways to do the same thing Although I'm not making any recommendations as to which is the best approach to writing the code attached to a graphical user interface, I think you need to consider the following. Build the graphical user interface should be your first step. Arrange for the user input to be transferred from the graphical user interface to program variables. Process the data that resides in the variables store the results of the processing in variables transfer the results from the variables to the graphical user interface those are the five steps that you should keep in mind when you're building programs that involve graphical user interfaces this approach allows for the processing code to be separate from the graphical user interface thus allowing for the graphical user interface to be easily altered without affecting the processing code so for example, you might use a entry box to allow the user to enter integers into a program. Alternatively, you may wish to use a slider bar to enter the same integers from the user. And of course, if the information is going to a variable, then the code that processes those integers will not be affected. You will just simply need to alter the graphical user interface and make sure that the data from the new widget that you've put on the graphical user interface is sent to the same variable. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.